Hello everybody, Blanca here. Um, I would like to say hello, first of all. Um, I haven't been in touch for a long time. It's been a turbulent year or two <laughs> for many of us and we've been through hell and back and we still stay strong and stand and we need to take a stand for our planet as well and as well as we do for each other and I just want to let you know that I'm here and please reach out if you if you feel I can help in any way or if you just want to share and that's why I'm here now I would like to share and uh, it's the poem I wrote a few years ago and there was a very romantic poem about the sea and my love for the ocean and for the salty waters and the unexplainable connection I have to the beach to the waters which probably many of you share with me and in September last year or late August last year um, 2020 a very difficult year for many of us um, I got angry I got really angry I was at my seventh month of stay in the jungle in Belize um, we we're living off grid it was very difficult physically mentally the most challenging time yet in my life yet I believe that would doesn't break you which it did almost break me but it didn't I'm here kicking still here strong and what doesn't break you makes you stronger and it's like one of my friends says it's a mental vaccination you know so I definitely got my good dose and uh, throughout this time where I felt the most isolated I've been ever in my life I also felt the most connected to the very deep of my soul to the depth of my soul and I I did a lot of writing a really really a lot of writing I wrote a whole book <laughs> and uh, I so searched and I dug deep and it was painful and I cried and I laughed and I observed mother nature that was my biggest thing when I was there in the jungle I, I suddenly learned how to listen to the weather how to see how the weather is changing you know when I'm doing laundry and you spend a lot of time doing laundry like I would to, to do one load of laundry I'd have to bring buckets of water from the river and one load took me 12, 12 buckets, which means six trips with heavy buckets of water down the stairs and up the stairs, which was luckily when I got the stairs before they were not even stairs. Um, and I developed hernia later on, uh, which I still have to have a surgery for because of this all hard work that we had to do in the jungle. Throughout the month of May, we were enduring fires and we were firefighting pretty much every day sometimes for hours sometimes late night and it was it was intense it was difficult and it's the times when you not only uncomfortable but when you are literally worried about your own life and your survival and when you function in a state of survival and it takes longer than just a day or a week or a month when it's ongoing and when it's your month seven um it's difficult you know and um when I returned back to Czech Republic, that's another and it's another story. It's been extremely hard to get home because we got stuck in the jungle, first by choice, and then we couldn't return back home because the border got closed just before us, and and um, there was nothing we could do. <laughs> um, there's so much more to talk about. It's a really huge topic, but um, I feel it'd be overwhelming to explain it all in one video, but. To go to the bottom of it, I wrote this poem while I was there and I would like to share this poem with you. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, I explained that I was at a point of my life where I was very angry and very frustrated and very tired mentally, physically, every on every level. So this poem is kind of accumulating it all, but it tends to be thought-provoking, soul-searching and hopefully by sharing um, we can understand each other a little bit more and our world. So here it is, I will read a poem and to warn you, it's a long poem. <laughs> so get your coffee ready, <laughs> sit down comfortably and here we go. From my ocean series of poetry, paintings and photography and it's Ode to the Planet, edited on the 1st of September 2020. What is it about the sea that I find so comforting, calming, filling my soul to the very fringes, 
Why do I feel like I can breathe to the full capacity of my lungs when I'm near the salty waters? Why do I have a mysterious smile on my face when I hear the seagulls? Why such overwhelming feeling of freedom takes over me as soon as I feel the sand under my toes? Every fraction of this could be explained. Neuro patterns, associations, all the data could be easily translated into statistics and numbers. Yet, I love how the science and the mystical meet, as they always have. We know it means more. If it resonates, then you have perhaps been there too. Plato's Atlantis. That's my favorite story. 75% of our blue planet contains of precious water. There is another life in there, in an absolute harmony. It invites me to sing a song as I get near. My heart jumps with excitement. My body is instantly revitalized, my whole existence nurtured. I still remember the first time when I ran into the sea. I tasted it to see whether it was really salty. I never felt so many tears against my body. When I bared my soul and bathed in its freshness. I knew then that not all tears are sad, they are tears of joy Tears of absolute happiness, tears of love, tears of empathy. It's like your heart coming to the surface. I got lost. You know, sometimes we get lost in life, we get lost between the lines, but we find ourselves again. Tears of love and tears of empathy. It's like your heart coming to the surface when you can't bear the feeling and keep it for yourself any longer. The absolute alignment inside you released out of your soul on the waves of life. Once down, once up. In an undeniable rhythm, which means we are alive. Keep surfing those waves, knowing that every night has a dawn. As long as the sun rises, the Egyptians painted the motion of the waters on the walls of their pyramids. That's how important the message was. I call it cardiometer. When there is up, it has to be down. It means the heart is beating and we are alive. When the line is in the middle, though, it is death. Embrace the waves and know it too shall pass. All poets would agree, even the greatest of them all. Rumi, William. All the tears vapor out to the clouds and then become back as drops of rain, but more polluted each time. They drizzle often storm into the oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, around the whole world. Our mother earth, the circle of life. I like to observe the gentle motion of the sea coming in and out with the tide. I am fascinated by the magnetic power of the full moon in the waters. Yet, we can still fully understand our body contains water too, approximately an equal percentage as our blue planet. How much of the ocean have we explored? About the same percentage as we subconsciously use our brain? 10% if I'm generous to many. <laughs> How much have we polluted of our oceans and our minds? Yet we have the need to go to the Mars. <laughs> Maybe there is a chance for us out there. 
we create even more fossil fuel burning, getting the spaceships into the orbit. Commercial flights, anybody? Or perhaps mining out there? Rape yet another planet? Like lupus. Once we depleted all the resources here. A boot on the moon, Mr. Trump. Will they grab me by my neck when I speak up? I'm not afraid. No, you and I won't agree. Just like you didn't with Paris. On behalf of your nation, you betrayed us all. Deputizing this world. Cut. Thanks God, two days ago, we got signed back into the Paris Agreement. Thank you, Joe Biden. Thank you, United States of America. Thank you for owning it. And thank you for being back to the game. Thank you. Cut. Going back to the poem. <laughs> I wasn't born minority. And I can't possibly understand the level of injustice. I just know how oppressing it feels from being born into an occupied country. From Czechoslovakia. Communist ruled, tongues scattered around, if always scared me seeing soldiers with machine guns. I was born with freedom of speech or travel, democracy or access to education. <laughs> Without signing up to the party. The academics and artists were made to be workers on a shovel and spineless sleazes climbed up the ladder. My parents' families didn't support the system and my dad, his brothers and sister had to endure very hard times while my grandfather was repeatedly investigated and forced to sign for the Communist Party. He never did. He never broke and kept standing strong with the dignity and respect in our family. Although the consequences were dehumanizing. He never told us if he got beaten up. He didn't die in prison like many others who openly disagreed with the system. But he has been through the war, captured, imprisoned and forced to work. When I was nine years old, the revolution came and all was over. And with it, the opportunity to travel to the sea. That's why. Sea is freedom to me. I really love the sea and the freedom it represents to me. I can't turn my back to the global problems because if I do, I will risk my family values or I get a bullet to my back or four or seven like George. We can't trust our systems. The people who get paid of our tax money are meant to protect us and they can brutally attack. Again and again, not all police, I know you good guys out there. I know you get out of your homes, leaving your family behind because you have other families to protect. Does our money also support the war? It perhaps paid the bullet which brutally murdered an innocent child in Syria, Palestine, Africa. But too many other places in the world where people get dehumanized, deprived of their homes and basic human rights, the rights to live. Brennona, George, Jacob, resting in power, you gave the world, myself included, thank you the power to speak up. You represent way too many precious lives lost.
I am so sorry. I am angry, I am sad, I am in despair, but I refuse to be helpless. You don't even understand our own brain, neither our own home, the earth. How little do we know? Machine people with machine guns, said Charlie Chaplin. It's not funny. Did you know he wasn't just a comedian? Robots. It is the word of my fellow Czech writer, Karel Čapek. He invented this world. R U R. Research it, please. Believe in people, another of his important works. Look it up. Or are we just pigs who can remotely control anything, Elam? According to the newest research you've done and a test on them transmitting thoughts to computers. Shall we be afraid? Machine people with machine guns. Karel Čapek. Electric cars charged by burning fossil fuels. Renewable solution, anyone? It's better than nothing, but it's still a bent aid on an open wound. Having said that, I'm in London again, and when I blow my nose, it doesn't come out black like it used to when I lived here before the electric car, so it did make a difference. But when we charge the electric car, it's still charged from electricity that comes from burning fossil fuels. It's a vicious circle we need to break. Okay? We need to make better choices. Apparently only a hundred power stations and you can supply the whole world, according to Elon Musk. Do you know anything about it? Can you share? Um, yeah, the true power is money, isn't it? Meanwhile, Tesla stock is going crazy. This was in August last year and still happening, all the madness. And that was Bitcoin as well on top of it. And I am grateful for Facebook platform to connect us all throughout our separation. Yet my friend made me aware of how our body posture turning into, into letter F. As we, letter F, as we keep staring on our phones. <sighs> to calm down, I love to hear the waves reaching the shore in its magnificent energy. I wish we could harvest it all and light up our world, renewed. Kissing fossil fuels goodbye. Too many gadgets, too many cables, wired technology, creating newer patterns, causing addictions, dopamine release, computer games teaching children to shoot a fellow human without any emotion. We lost moral compass. We lost connection with Mother Earth. To our families, values. This is not how we meant to live. There were floods before, and the next one is coming to wipe us all the sins if we won't change the direction we are heading. Atlantis, remember? We can connect computers to brain and manipulate it with a simple thought while accepting that the news we get fed are manipulated truths. Yet we can't way, we can't find a way how to stop. Even metals from rusting, really? Use the sheer power of the elements which so freely offers itself to us all. The sea surrounding countries, the whole nations. Ocean slapping the cliffs hard, letting us know they are there to be utilized. Wake up. 
It's right there within our reach. Shame on us, our priorities and budgets. Nothing costs more than health and no money can buy it unless you have enough to get stem cells. <laughs> yeah, that would be for another poem. Stem cells, please keep yourselves happy. Alkaline in your body is incredibly important. No insurance company will pay for um, stem cells though and pharma has no interest. <laughs> Illness is business. We, call planet, we can't plant medicine from the Amazon alternative, yet it was here way before the pharmacy and it could resolve most of our health issues. Amazon compulsive buying. The shopping seems to be the modern cue. Okay, here's a solution, in my understanding. We need to bring back traditions and learn from so-called primitive tribes and cultures. Go back to the roots. Heal ourselves, our families, our ancestors through us. Our future generations and urgently heal our planet. It can't breathe. It's now making us taste our own medicine. It had enough. <laughs> we can't breathe, screams the people of the whole world and our planet collectively during the quarantine. We are scared, we are lonely, we are united in our fear. Unless we can change it, it will take every single one of us. We are all in this together. To center myself, I love to watch the waters. I read this in Pristine Foreign Forest, my home for past seven months. And altogether, about two and a half years I've been coming here. I live by the river in the jungle in Yucatan, Belize. I live of grit and peace with the nature. I aim to lower carbon footprint the best I can. While I'm recording this video, I live back in London and it's a huge contrast and it's coming from an extreme to another and that's why I would like to share this message because I've been on both sides and I'm here to share and I'm here to care. Nothing is easy out there in the wilderness. Did you know what's happening to the mosquitoes in Florida? Have you heard about it? U.S. particularly Florida's experiments to extinct mosquitoes is a disaster waiting to happen. I don't like these little bloodsuckers, but they are part of the food chain, providing for many creepy crawlies, fish and many more, keeping the ecosystem balanced. Most of us, all, preventing the mass migration of most dangerous predators of all, taking over the rainforest and cutting it down. The little guardians, mosquitoes, with their sharp swords, all are here to defend. People don't like to be bit. <laughs> I can tell you about that. I've uh, had my share of bites in this whole time. <laughs> all legs completely bitten and, and wrists and everywhere you expose your skin and then you just scratch it and it hurts and there's blood and there's sweat and it's a lot of discomfort so that's the little mosquitoes so but we can't just get rid of them they're part of the world we just can't do it right um snakes <laughs> chase our own tail biting it and consuming ourselves is it only a myth I think so. The nature is way smarter than burning both sides of a candle. We are not, though. Covered to the importance of climate change was meant to have in 2020, and Greta went back to school today. But the planet is healing. It's forced to give it a break. <laughs> Great that Greta made Angela Macro here... Um, 
my curl. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Tungsken lady, I called her. She's amazing. Just like the iron lady. This is a Tungsken lady. So thank you, Angela. Thank you for hearing our future generations and giving them your precious gift of attention and time. She has a high melting point. She knows how to lead out of trouble. She is informed former Minister of Environment. Did you know that? She knows the urgency and importance. Germany's priority is tackling climate change, leading the European Union in important times like those. Thank you, Greta, for speaking to the right leaders and not wasting time to the ignorant ones. Do you have a too political? It's too exhausting. So let's calm down. When I get a chance, I go out there and watch the sea. I take time myself to relax, meditate on the sand of the beaches. I had the privilege to enjoy a rare treat seeing beautiful whales in their search to release us of CO2 and feed themselves selflessly our toxins and fears. They are tired though. Don't you see that? We kill them. We kill the waves with plastic waste. And just if it's not enough, we finish them in blood hunt. I've joined the protesters by the Japanese embassy in London years ago, wondering how can we let this happen? And I felt the pain. I saw the pictures I cannot unsee. Blood baths. How we treat our planet and its creatures, it's like cutting off our own hand. There is so much life around the gorgeous corals, yet we destroyed more than 50% of it during the Industrial Revolution, which we dare to call evolution. Soon there will be no corals left. When I dived in the beautiful waters around the coral reef in Belize and I saw the life still out there, not giving up upon us, it was one of the most beautiful feelings I've ever had in my whole entire life. Astonishing, most gorgeous sight, so peaceful, so colorful, so vulnerable. The most spectacular pieces and pieces of art I've ever seen. Genius Mother Nature. The best artist of it, of all. Plankton floating in absolute harmony, containing our suffocation. The CO2. <laughs> Keeping us alive, supporting the efforts of the rainforest and every tree out there. There's so much life, so much beauty. Did you know how much we owe it and how we, pl the plankton, how much um, it can help us to mitigate climate change? Do you know we lose two football feeds of it every minute? Yet it could help us even more than planting trees. We need to plant trees, but the deforestation is happening at the same time. Plankton is consuming the CO2. We need to create healthy oceans, healthy water to tackle the climate changes, the crisis. Other times, I like to observe how gently is the sea washing its shores. I adore the way it pumps and sand and its foam cuddling it, tackling, just like with a blanket, like a baby. I love the celebration of all the bubbles fizzing out of the water as they are moving in the most joyful and dazzling dance. But there are also disposable masks, gloves, straws washed out. Shame on us. On my birthday last year, I walked around a deserted island in the Caribbean. There was island no one lived on. There was just one house, a take care of house. We took a boat, got there, and then walked around the island. It took two hours to walk around. And within those two hours, I counted about 64 flip-flops washed out on the sea. 
antiperspirants, bottles, cans, Coca-Cola. The whole island of trash is floating in the sea and it's not a pretty sight. How dare we are to let this happen? <laughs> Children could teach us better. Yes, Greta, thank you. The peaceful protest was a great start. But even Martin Luther King got killed. Please stay peaceful, but not passive. There is no time left. We need to attack and tackle the problem and weed it out from the roots. If everybody takes personal responsibility, we can still change things. There is still hope. Awareness is the key. Educate yourself, please. Be the change you want to see in the world. We help the planet by changing our own behavior. Just take your own personal responsibility as the only thing we can do right now to create a bigger change. When I was a small girl, I walked through um, out river and <laughs> it was in our village. We have this beautiful river called Svratka. It starts in the gorgeous rainforest. Eldest in the country is a primary forest. And it comes through the village and there was a garbage in there when I was a girl and I didn't like it. So I I decided to clean it and, um, and I did. <laughs> and I uh, picked up everything and maybe... Did I make a difference? Perhaps not. Maybe not to the river. But maybe it helped to change perspective. I don't know. Maybe change something in me. <laughs> I will never know. But I will sleep better at night knowing I did something. Never underestimate any of your actions, however small they might be. All the light in this world is waiting for us to understand it. It's still waiting for us to stop putting a blanket around Earth, creating excessive heat. The planet is sick and it needs us. It's calling for help. Floods, tsunamis, hurricanes are our warnings. Its cup is full and it's overfloating. But the last drop will probably from melting icebergs. The minute to 12 was 30 seconds ago. Wake up. Remember who you are. I cannot explain my love for the ocean, for the gorgeous shells, for the creatures that once inhabited it. Our planet is like a shell and we have to stop being hermits. Or something larger than life will one day pick us up, like an empty vessel, put us to its ear and we'll listen to the sound of a story which once used to be our planet Earth. I love, really love the ocean. Every single time I return there, it feels like homecoming. Richard Williams. Whatever it is that you fight for, racism, poverty, feminism, gay rights, or any type of equality, it won't matter at least. Because if we won't all work together to save the environment, we will all be equally extinct. Educate yourself. Take action now. Believe in people. Love is the only answer and the answer is you
take good care everybody lots of love blanca